In this video, the Bitcoin hash rate is currently collapsing and is currently down almost 50% from the recent highs. This is very bad for Bitcoin. And look at this, we just got a death cross on the daily time frame. And I will show you historical price data to help us predict what this means for the immediate short term for the Bitcoin price. And if you think that that sounds interesting, then I think that you should definitely watch this video. Hello guys and welcome to the moon. My name is Carl and I am here to bring you this cryptocurrency video. And before I start talking about the death cross, I want to take a look at the short term price action first. So basically what I've been talking about for the past few days is that Bitcoin is currently in this potential bear flag, right? As we saw this big uh, pole, uh, the big dump, and then we've seen this flag formation. And basically if we were to measure the flag pole from this point down to this point, then we would uh, have a target of, uh, let's say, yeah, somewhere along the line, so 3.8. Um, I mean, this, of course, depends on when this breaks out. Previously, I said something like 3.6, 3.5. But yeah, obviously, this depends on where this breaks. Uh, we could also, if you are even more bearish, you could measure all the way up from here. And you can um, say that this is the full uh, pole, which, which technically still makes sense. You, you can do that. And if we were to do the measurement as such, then we would get a, another target. And that target would be all the way down at $2,450. And am I saying that Bitcoin is going to 2.4K? No, I am not saying that. I'm just uh, telling you what I see. And I see that a potential bear flag might be emerging. And what we need to do here is just pay attention to this support level, just like I pointed out for the past few days. If Bitcoin breaks this support, then we should expect very bearish movement. Uh, however, in the immediate short term, uh, it's still possible that Bitcoin might break through this resistance and we might see uh, yet another leg up, uh, but we would actually still be in this bear flag, even if we do see a move up like that, uh, because we do have this uh, upwards resistance here and um, such a move could take Bitcoin all the way up to 7.9 uh, to 7.7 thousand approximately. So uh, yeah, that's $200 zone. And the thing is that when we see uh, the, the price trend to the upside like this, but we see the volume trend to the downside, which we are seeing now, then usually that means that we are in a consolidation phase in a bigger trend. And that bigger trend currently is um, quite obviously to the downside. So let's just keep in mind that technically it makes more sense to be a bear here rather than a bull in the longer term, even though in the immediate short term um, you can still make the bullish case for, for a pump towards the upside. But I just want to stay objective here and of course we all would love for Bitcoin to go to the moon right now. However, um, technicals are technicals, I just want to point them out, right? And you can see that this resistance that Bitcoin is running into, this previous support level, is the uh, 6.9k level approximately and this is where Bitcoin is currently struggling to break through. But like I said yesterday, if Bitcoin breaks this level, then we might see a nice little pop towards the upside. All right, let's talk about the death cross because I haven't seen people talk about it. And I guess one of the reasons why people are not really, really talking about it anymore is because of the fact that uh, the, the past few death crosses haven't really been very significant. And I don't want to make it seem like these death and golden crosses are extremely significant. I think that the significance they bring is the fact that hundreds of thousands of people and traders are watching these death crosses and golden crosses and some people assign some significance to them so it might be a self-fulfilling prophecy and that is reason enough for me to bring it up but basically we have a death cross uh, happening right now it actually uh, it already happened and this is when the 50 moving average here on the daily time frame uh, breaks below the 200 moving average and the opposite is what is known as a golden cross and for example you can see that this golden cross was not a very good buy signal you would have bought here and that would have been a very very bad place to um, to uh, buy and if we go to the previous death cross we saw right there actually uh, the interesting part here is that Bitcoin pumped 40% in two days uh, right into the death cross so this also failed to be a good signal then then again you could make the case that 
the, the, the time after here was, of course, very bearish. But the fact that Bitcoin pumped 40% into this death cross uh, goes against the, uh, the general narrative. One golden cross that, of course, performed very well was this one. Because if you bought right there, then you uh, made a lot of money, even if you sold uh, at the next death cross. Essentially, if you uh, bought that uh, golden cross and sold the next death cross, then you actually made approximately 70% on your money. And let's go even further back because uh, we can see that this death cross also did bring a good trade with it. Let's say you sold this death cross when it happened right there and you bought back at the next golden cross right there then you made a 22% gain on your uh, money there. And of course, if you scroll back even further back, uh, we can see all of the uh, previous golden and death crosses. I'm not going to go through all of them because I've already done that in previous videos. But the summary from looking at all of the previous death and golden crosses is that it's not really a very reliable buy and sell signal. But we usually do see volatility around the, uh, the death and golden crosses. So if there is something that is for sure, then it is that we very rarely go sideways into a golden or a death cross so volatility could be expected and i would love to know what you guys think please vote in this poll do you believe that the death cross is a very bearish sign or do you believe that it's even a bullish sign or do you believe that it's not significant at all leave your answer in the poll next up huge news the bitcoin hash rate just collapsed almost 50 percent in a very very short time frame and here you can see the bitcoin hash rate and you can see in the past few days here, the hash rate has completely um, collapsed to the downside. We can see that from the all-time high down to uh, where we are right now, it's almost a 50% correction. And that is, of course, bad. That is not good. We want the hash rate to go up. Why? Well, the hash rate is a measurement of the security of the Bitcoin blockchain. The higher the hash rate, the more secure Bitcoin is and the harder it is to attack the blockchain. So why is this happening? Well, when the price dumped dramatically a few days ago, this meant that some miners were now unprofitable because Bitcoin went down so, so rapidly in price. So they had to shut off their machines. That's why the hash rate is dropping. The more people that use their computing power to, um, to secure the network, the more hash rate. So let's take a look at the Bitcoin difficulty adjustment. Here you see all of these difficulty adjustments. Um, a few weeks ago, it adjusted 7% up. Here it adjusted 5% uh, up approximately. And now we saw a huge, almost 16% uh, decrease in the difficulty. This is one of the biggest or maybe the biggest one we've ever seen in the history of Bitcoin. And we can see this visualized more here. This is the difficulty adjustment. Um, and if we go into the past three years, we can see that we saw a huge uh, uh, fall in the difficulty adjustment. And uh, usually we see these smaller adjustments of maybe 5% or 2%. So 16% in one adjustment is uh, extraordinary. And I know that some people might think that this is a little bit hard to understand. So let me just give you an analogy and an example of uh, a more easy to understand a scenario to explain what is actually happening here. So first of all, as you may know, the Bitcoin inflation rate is the most predictable uh, of any other asset. The inflation rate will eventually reach 0% and the inflation rate gets cut in half every four years and uh, the average block time is approximately uh, 10 minutes and the block reward is what gets cut in half every, f uh, every four years. And let's just compare with gold. Let's say the gold price is $1,000. And let's now as uh, assume that the gold price goes up to $4,000 in the next few months. Well, now it's going to be much more profitable to mine gold. So maybe three times more people will now mine gold. So the inflation will rapidly increase as more people are mining gold because it's now more profitable. And the interesting part is that this cannot happen in Bitcoin. Even if the Bitcoin price goes down to $1,000 tomorrow or goes up to $20,000 tomorrow, uh, eventually the difficulty will adjust to make sure that the, uh, the block time is always averaging around 10 minutes and that the inflation rate remains uh, approximately the same. And how this difficulty adjustment works is as the following. 
So let me give you a scenario here. Let me just explain the difficulty adjustment. Let's just say that we have a school class, uh, a classroom with 20 students, and uh, we give them a, uh, a problem, a mathematical problem. Let's say it's a Sudoku. Well, we could uh, create this Sudoku to make sure that it's going to be kind of hard to solve for 20 people. And we give them this uh, problem, and if they solve it in five minutes, well, we know that we have to make it a little bit harder to make sure that they uh, they solve it in 10 minutes. Uh, and we so we adjust it a little bit, and now it's, it maybe takes 9 minutes. Well, we still have to make it a little bit harder. But when they solve it in 10 minutes, now we know that uh, it's difficult enough for them. And let's now assume that a school bus with 20 new students come in, and they also help solve this Sudoku problem. Maybe now it only takes 7 minutes, or maybe only 5 minutes to solve. Now we have to readjust the difficulty, so we make the Sudoku harder. And here comes the difficulty adjustment. This is happening automatically in the back end without no one having to regulate it. It's a self-regulating system where the mathematical problem that miners are solving every 10 minutes gets automatically adjusted to always average uh, 10 minutes. So. Uh, on average, miners find the solution every 10 minutes. It could happen in a second or one minute. It's very rare and it's not very likely, but it could happen. It could also happen in 20 minutes, but the average is always approximately 10 minutes. So yeah, that is basically what is happening with the uh, difficulty adjustment right now. The Sudoku or the mathematical problem is getting a little bit easier to uh, solve so miners can once again be profitable and continue to mine Bitcoin and this is why uh, price volatility is actually not a big problem for Bitcoin uh, because it will self-regulate and if you liked that analogy with the classroom please leave a thumbs up down below let's see if we can push this video to 3000 likes that would be amazing and by the way guys today I recorded an interview with AIBC in this video I talk about the financial markets and the fact that we are moving in towards a depression and I talk about Bitcoin's role in the coming depression go down click the link below and leave a like on this video and interestingly enough my previous video I recorded with AIBC and Jessica here. This video got a little bit viral and is now their second most watched video on their channel. And I think the reason why it got a lot of views recently is because in this video I talk about how Bitcoin could potentially go down in value in the initial stages of the inevitable crisis. And just one or two weeks after this was uploaded, the stock markets crashed and then Bitcoin also crashed with the stock markets. And not only that, I also talked in this video about how the Fed will probably lower interest rates and just a few hours after uh, this video was uploaded, they lowered interest rates. So I think the reason why this is getting a lot of attention is because of the fact that, um, yeah, call it luck or not, but many of the predictions that I talked about in this video came true uh, much sooner than later. I will leave a link to both of these videos down below. Thank you for watching and if you haven't seen this video, then click right there right now and I'll see you guys tomorrow.